Hello everyone, Eric, KJ4YZI, went over to a buddy's house today and decided to uh, check out some of his stuff, antenna and what he's got going on. And He's plagued in an HOA with uh, restrictions on putting antennas outside. So we have a you know two-story house here and of course you see there's neighbors all over the place. So what could you do for an antenna? A lot of people might say, well, attic mount. You know, and if you put an antenna out here in the backyard, definitely would be seen and you'd have people complaining and whatever. I know one thing that somebody uh, has tried based on the idea I had, and we'll show you what he's got in here, but up on the, you see the corners here. Let's see if I can zoom in. It's got a cement tile roof. So what you can do is you can take some magnet wire, right? And you can put little standoffs on the corners up there, little dowels or something and attach magnet wire from that corner to that corner down here and wrap around about you know six inches off the top of the roof there and you would not even see it. I know for a fact nobody would know that's there. Um, and another person, I, a friend of mine, had um, a dipole or a, a wire underneath the uh, fascia board there. That one worked okay. Um, be better if you can get it underneath, you know, hanging down a little bit, but in John's situation, we have a attic mounted antenna. So I'll show you that and we'll try to make, a, I'm going to set up digital for him um, on his radio so that he can operate some PSK and some RTTY and stuff. And, uh, but for now, we'll see what he's got. I'll take a look in his attic and see. You might re recognize the antenna. It's a little familiar. But uh, me, if it was me, I'll tell you where I'd have an antenna, right here in this palm tree. I'd, I'd go right up the side of that palm tree one day, uh, up the side of that branch there in the dark, no one would even see it. <laughs> uh, or maybe, you know, string a small dipole between the branches somewhere here. I, I'd make it stealth is what I would do, but let's see what he's got in the attic and what's going on. So we're going to take a trek through the attic and I got to say, I stopped climbing in attics when I stopped and left AT&T and DirecTV. And here I am again. <clears throat> in Florida, you may notice that the attics are built a little bit differently than up north. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm in my socks, by the way, too. It's about 86 degrees up here right now. It's not bad. It's raining outside. So what we have here, you remember this. This is the MFJ uh, loop that I used to have. And this is one uh, viable option for... Uh, attic mounted antennas. He also has a uh, uh, Radio Shack antenna rotator here, a cheap one that he bolted on. There's an idea for mounting that. Trying to hold the flashlight at the same time. And uh, so this thing, the reason he has a rotator on it, it does have not really that directional, but some sort of null through the middle of the antenna. So you can actually move this just a little bit, rotate it and have just a little bit of a null through the hoop here, um, you know, if you needed to reject a little bit of signal. Um, so <clears throat> let's test out the night mode here with my new camera. There we go. So that's a night shot. <laughs> Pretty cool. So you can see you may have a better, you know, there's a lot of trusses up here, a lot of not so much room for attic mounted antennas, depending on the size. Now you could actually run a dipole. See, he's also got a, looks like a, what is that, a dual band J-pole? Yeah. So he's got a J-pole here for two meters of 440 up in here. Works rather well. But some of the problems you may face with attic mounted antennas. If your roof up here has metal, uh, may be a problem. He has a cement tile roof, but the cement tile roof I think has a layer of uh, foil somewhere, I think, or mesh uh, between the wood here and the tiles, which may be causing a little bit of uh, receive issues. Um, if you have a lot of wiring, what you want to make sure is what I was diagnosing here. Whenever you run wires, let's look at where it comes out of the wall here <clears throat> without falling through a ceiling. John, you got insurance for the when I fall through the ceiling? All right, so you can see here, there we go. That's where it comes out of the wall. And uh, 
when you're running power, you want to keep it perpendicular to power that's in the, the roof here, the ceiling. Like underneath this insulation, you'll have power lines that are uh, by code stapled along these, these beams here, and you, you want to go perpendicular to it. The longer you run power with your coax, the power jumps onto the coax and you get terrible AC noise. Um, the same thing for in the wall there. John decided to run power for the rotator and the coax straight up the wall. So that may be a little bit of an issue, not sure. So, um, but anyways, keep in mind where you run your coax. If you can get your coax up on the roof and chase it up here and staple it out of the way from the wiring on the bottom here, that would be even better. Uh, let's see if I can move here. Okay, so you could also, here's another option, you can have a dipole up here. And if you wanted a dipole, uh, you don't have to have it exactly straight out, limited space up here. I look at this up here and I figure if I had a ballon up here hanging a foot, you know, from the top there, uh, 20 meter, I could fit in here. I could run one leg that way as close down over there as I can get it. And if I can't get it all the way down extended, I could bend the end on a 90, go over a little bit to take up, you know, the, the rest of the the wire there. And then the other direction would go that way. Um, focus. There it goes. The other leg I can run that way. And it doesn't have to necessarily be straight out uh, 180 degrees apart from each other. So you could fit a dipole up here. A Yagi in this attic would be a little bit tough if you wanted to put a two meter Yagi. But these, these uh, loop antennas, and this is the MFJ which I've had really good luck with, but you could use several other uh, loop antennas up here if you wanted, uh, you know, something you can tune remotely and not have to climb up in the attic to tune it, or if you build your own. But overall, um, you know, the, if the foil or the AC ducts here shouldn't make a difference. They're, you know, that uh, insulation with that foil on the outside, it shouldn't, shouldn't act as an antenna unless you had that thing laying on there. There's no, uh, no AC ducts over here at all, so. Shouldn't be a big problem. Um, and like I said, if you have metal on your roof, that may be a problem. Or sometimes they put foil on the inside of all the attics I've seen with AT&T over the years. There were attics that had foil up on the inside as like a heat shield so that the, the heat, because it gets hot up in here in these attics. Sometimes it gets 140 degrees and that may be a problem if they're using a foil on top that may cause uh, issues with your signal. So that's your tour of an attic here and uh, what he's got up here in the attic. All right, so I uh, brought over my MFJ1204 here for John to get into digital modes. He's using an FT450 here, I'm familiar with that radio. And we were on PSK, check this out. So I just worked Germany on 50 watts, uh, uh, Delta Lima 2 Oscar Charlie Echo, I think it was, it's a tough copy. Let me see if I scroll up here. Yeah, D, uh, DL2OCE, and I was using a Jones call sign here. 7,500 miles away from an attic mounted loop antenna. The possibilities are there. It's a little tough copy with this noise that we got. I've got to figure out where the noise is coming from. Um, but uh, I hope to uh, get home and see how I can work John. Uh, from, from the shack here, you know, right to my house. Um, yeah, so PSK is working. All right, so with the MFJ antenna in the attic, decided to go from PSK, we jumped over. John says, tell me about FT, FT8, I wanna see FT8. Well, here, we just worked, uh, that's Germany, Delta Lima 1, Bravo, Quebec Romeo. We did have a contact on FT8 with uh, Italy Zulu 6 Alpha Alpha Whiskey. And, um, that's on FT8, one of the modes that I really don't participate in. I would do FT8 call, but uh, I'm running out of time here. So that's uh, on 14.074. So PSK and FT8, both DX stations. You can see the list here is just populating and pouring in. Look at this. There's so many stations on there pouring in. All right, so some more DX coming in there on PSK. MD0 IOM with IT9 PQO. 
So take a look at this. I'm at home now, and I was I was on the phone with John. I said, John, make this contact. And here is uh, the uh, VE3NOO who was uh, actually helped me get some other video clips of different modes. But look, look at this, okay, with his magnetic loop in that attic, all right, and he had it set to 60 watts at his house, 7,058 miles, KM4MCK from VE3NOO. He was working them, and I was watching it. I couldn't decode John because he was too close, but I saw everything. See, okay, John, fine business. Uh, welcome to the waterfall. John was making his first PSK. Uh, he didn't have to hold my hand. <laughs> But listen, guys, here's the moral of the story. John, we're going to work on HOA antennas. That'll be videos coming up real soon. I'm going to get him on the air with something a little bit better outdoors that won't be noticeable. But um, in the meantime, 7,000 miles and then the contacts you saw earlier uh, to Germany and others on PSK. There is DX out there. You may not be able to do it on phone. But you can do it on digital. And you don't have to use FT8 if, if you, unless you want to. But you can rag chew with PSK and other digital modes. Stay tuned because I got a whole barrel full of other modes that we're going to talk about here. And you're going to see all these different kinds. And I hope to light up the waterfalls once again. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.